Hi everybody, it's me, Cory T, and I'm very excited because today is a very special video and I've brought on Mary um, onto my channel who you may have seen before on a previous collaboration that we both did together and I'm really excited to bring her on specifically for this video where I'm going to be talking about and we're going to be talking about how I manifested my pregnancy which I'm so excited to share with you all the ins and outs of this journey but because there's so much to say I wanted to have a conversation about it. I didn't want to just do it on my own because, you know, there's things that I might miss, there's things that I might forget to say. And it's it's sometimes much easier to just talk about it with someone else. And this topic in particular is something that's really close to my heart and to Mary's heart. And we've both been on these journeys and we're both on a journey with creating um uh, a specific person like we were talking about earlier like but the, a baby basically you know a family and so we're going to talk about that and I'm going to talk about all the magical things that seem to have happened you know in my journey to creating this situation that I'm in now and um yeah I thought Mary was a really good person to talk about this with because she so deeply understands um the process and the journey and she's on her own too like many of you guys are as well so I really hope that you get something out of this video and yeah welcome back to the channel <laughs> thank you and, and, and I'm so happy to be back I know it's been like six months since our last um collab which I enjoyed that one and I'm probably gonna enjoy this one even more because it's like my favorite topic right now which is which is making making babies yeah. Um, but you really hit the nail on the head when you said, um, this is still manifesting a specific person. Right. And, and I, I manifested my SP romantically years yeah. ago. We're married now, all those things. Um, but manifesting pregnancy, manifesting children, manifesting a family is still manifesting a person. We're still manifesting a human. Maybe not, it's not romantically, it's different, but it's still manifesting a person. And so even though I manifested my husband, I still, and, and I know you still relate to those who are on their manifestation journey with their SP romantically, um, because manifesting children is something that we've both struggled with, you know? Yeah. So, so something that I always say is that, you know, we're born manifestors, we're manifesting long before we learn about LOA. So knowing that we've always been manifesting, I'm curious, how far back do you think this started for you? Like, when do you think you actually started planting the seeds for this baby to, to manifest in your life? It's really interesting. Cause actually when I, just when you were saying that I was thinking, actually, it wasn't just a few years ago. It was like when, you know, when we met like nine yeah. years ago, like mm -hmm. nine years ago, we, me and me and Johnny had this really strong connection I thought you're going to be in my life like I didn't know why I didn't know why that feeling was so strong but I just yeah. I imagined that he was someone that I wanted to do life with I suppose and and in my mind that meant also having a family with but I wasn't really thinking about it in very much detail or like planning it I didn't really know about manifestation mm -hmm. back then but I was thinking I see you as this person in my life is see you as the potential father of my child. And that's, that's how I see you. So I guess it started back then, but I think consciously the conscious kind of creation, because like you say, like this is conscious creation. This is a creation of a yeah. different thing, but it's the same, you know, it's the same sort of process and it's the same. We're just, we're just creators. And so I think like what it was is I, especially a lot of people on my channel, you'll know my journey, you'll know my story. There was a period of time where I was in Italy and he was in, um, he was in, actually it was before that, before he went to Korea and we were together for a little while and we'd had this amazing time. And I was thinking then that's when it started. I just thought, oh my God, we are supposed to be together. Even though the timing was wrong and he was going to Korea and everything. I was thinking we're, we're supposed to be together, but I had been told by my doctor and, you know, years of this diagnosis of polycystic ovaries had given me the mindset that it's not going to be easy for me to have a mm. baby. It's not going to be easy. So I had that belief in my head. It's not going to be easy. And like, you know, yeah. I, I just really didn't think 
that it was going to happen. And I wasn't really sure of where my cycle was. I have really long cycles. Like they can be up to like 60 days, like so long or longer even. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't really even sure where I was in my cycle during those five weeks that we were together. But I got pregnant within two weeks of being with him after having thought it. I remember walking around his garden thinking, I can Mm -hmm. imagine my child running around this garden like and I was imagining mm-hmm. it, talking about it you're visualizing me. it and not even realizing that you're visualizing it yeah it was totally like, visual- creating it literally mm-hmm. like visualizing like it, I just remember being in that garden thinking I think I'm gonna come here for like the rest of my life I remember having that feeling and thinking yeah. I don't know why but this is a really strong feeling that I'm gonna walk around this garden with my child and uh, I was telling my friend about it and literally like two weeks later I was I was pregnant with a pregnancy that ended in miscarriage but the thing was that you know so that that miscarriage happened uh it was a very very early miscarriage it was like it was what they call a chemical pregnancy yeah and uh, I was like what I was so shocked I was so so shocked like I was with this pregnancy as well weirdly um but like I, with that one I was really shocked because I was like oh my god I can't believe I actually got pregnant so quickly now you know it's possible like now you know that yeah. you can do it even though it ended you knew it was possible yeah 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 so I knew mm-hmm. I knew that it was possible and I was you know really I was really upset that um that the that, that it ended in a miscarriage but um I was okay as well. And Mm -hmm. I feel like this is the way that I felt about these spirit babies, right? They know, they know when they want to come. They know they this, this baby knew that baby knew that it it wasn't the right time. It it just, it didn't Mm -hmm. feel comfortable. Whatever reason it didn't want to come to earth at that time. And so with that, I started having this like connection to like spiritually to like my spirit babies, like, (laughs) <laughs> yeah I'm yeah no, I, do- I, I i i totally understand i feel the same way i have three you know and i do feel that connection with them they at the end of the day you know and i know that you're pregnant now like when we're gone for the long haul you are very pregnant now but yeah. um still even with the ones that we lost you and i both for a period of time, no matter how brief we held life inside of us and, mm. and, and those lives, like you said, for whatever reason, it wasn't the right time for yeah. us, for them. And those lives had to move on to the next part of their journey, but it doesn't take away from the fact that you held those lives inside of you were, you yeah. were a mother even yeah. before, you know, even before actually giving birth, you were a mother because you carried those lives. Definitely. And I think that's such a beautiful mentality. I think like, as soon as like, you're pregnant your mentality just for a woman like it it changes so so changes as soon as you see that second line it changes I was like oh my god I was in the doctors because I didn't understand what was going on I was like I don't understand all these I was literally I don't know what I'm doing I went to the doctors they were like do this test don't do those other ones do this one and then we both watched as the second line came up and we were both went (gasps) and it was like what (laughs) and I I was in I was in shock but yeah I think that, oh yeah, and I told you as well, didn't I? I found out that like um when you have a when you're as soon as you're pregnant, you have that DNA in your body. Yes. And it stays with you for yep. the rest of your life, even if you yep. miscarry that child. So like that's kind of a comforting thing and it it made me feel mm-hmm. like more connected to, you know, this yep. spirit child. I know that that was a girl. I don't know why, but I know that that first one was a girl. And I've had these feelings like in, in the, over the years where like, I felt like she was with me. And so I, I think mm-hmm. like the spiritual connection to like this, the spirit, the spirit babies was really important to me. Yeah. And I, sometimes like I used to talk to them and I got to the point where I used to say, whenever you want to come, you can come. Cause I'm clearly oh. trying to control this. And it's, mm. I don't want to do that to you. Like, I trust you more than I trust me. And so, like, yeah. this, like, gave me so much peace because it was kind of, like, mm-hmm. handing it over. Like, I was clearly, like, quite attached at that point. You know, I'd had that miscarriage, and I think that made me more attached because it was like, what's wrong with me? Will I will I be able yeah. to do this again? 
And then, you know, long story short, I actually ended up having three more miscarriages. So I had, you know, three more times where I got a positive test and then miscarried. They were all quite early, all, you know, early, uh, early miscarriages. But nonetheless, like those, (gasps) and then the, what? And then what was going on and what's wrong with me? You know, like I had that mindset of like, you know, I couldn't help it at the time because the 3D is literally showing you the complete opposite of what you're trying to believe. Like I'm a mother and this is going to happen for me. And I know I trust the process and I trust these spirit babies. And and then it goes, no. (laughs) And It goes back to what we were talking about earlier about how, you know, there's parallels between manifesting a child and manifesting a specific person. Yeah. And yeah. what you're, what you're, the way you're explaining this. And I, and I went through something similar. My miscarriages have happened later in the pregnancies. It was nine weeks, 11 weeks and seven weeks, yeah. but, um, it, it mirrors almost that hot and cold that some people see when they're manifesting a romantic partner where like, Oh my God, they're coming back. We're going on a date and they ghosted me again. Yeah. And, oh, okay. He just texted me that he missed me and he's gone. Right. Exactly. And so it kind of mirrors that hot and cold, that roller coaster, and it can have you feeling really, really defeated. Yeah. Right. Yeah, of, am yeah. I even going to be able to do this? Yeah. Like, does this even point? work? Is and it, it can what, be really easy yeah. to get into your head. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, and I, I really did feel what the thing, I think the biggest thing for me was definitely feeling like, I mean, we actually, the thing is that all of them were kind of, because of my polycystic ovaries, they were all a shock. They were all like, oh, what? Mm-hmm. Because my pit, my cycle was so all over the place. And yeah. I was kind of guessing like, have I ovulated? I don't even know. Like what, you know, it was just kind of like very, <laughs> just yeah. stab in the dark sort of thing. That's what kind of made it a bit harder, but um at the same time we absolutely and I certainly got to the point where I was like I am I don't want to do this right now I don't I actually don't I'm exhausted I I can't I just I don't want to do this and and I'm okay if I don't do this for maybe years and I'm okay even if it doesn't happen and I definitely definitely got to that point and I think before that things had happened like you know like really interesting things like before we were even together before me and even Johnny even you know I'd manifested that relationship and we were together again uh, there's a field like near my house and I had imagined walking through that field with him and imagined being pregnant right and I had literally imagined like me and the sun shining on me and living in that visualization I literally imagined it and that was happened I imagine that about three weeks before we got were together again and then um like two weeks ago me and him walked through that field and I'm pregnant and it was like huh this yeah is so weird <laughs> it's one of those like pinch me moment right it was like one of those I, I said to him well no we have to walk over to that particular spot over there because that's where I imagined it and that's where I imagined walking with you and the sun shining or what the hell and it was oh. one of those moments of like I really visualize it that's where manifestation literally blows my mind like when like I visualize something and then it's literally happened as I imagined it to happen and so yeah. I think as well like for me the process of like manifesting a pregnancy has been incredibly spiritual you know Um, And it's been very much like a connection to this. Yeah. Like this, this, my, my spirit babies and trusting, like, if this is bent for me, then it will come. And I'm just trusting that that that's the truth and I'm going to trust my life's process. But I think like, as I said, I, um, the, the real, the truth of it is that whenever it happened, me and Johnny were not trying at all. In fact, we were actively not trying. We we were being <laughs> really cautious. Um mm-hmm. because I was so like, I don't want to do this right now. I wanna I wanna I wasn't really in a very good state mentally. I wanted to get happier, I wanted to get stronger, I wanted to like get in shape. <laughs> I'd like put on a bit yeah. of really like I just want to go to the gym and I want to like you know focus on my health and like just feel really good about myself again and um yeah so he and he wasn't in a good place either so it sort of seemed like no of course we wouldn't like try and have a baby right now like it just doesn't seem like the right thing to do 
and um we got back from malta and i'd had like oh, th this is where it kind of like <laughs> it's really funny because i'd been thinking okay if we're not having a baby right now i want to make sure that we i put something in place to make sure that i can in the future so the plan was mm -hmm. to go and do an ivf cycle and to do to go and yeah eggs so i was living as if i was going to do that like within the next couple of months and yeah. so i was living i was preparing my body for pregnancy but for an ivf cycle to have healthy eggs so that when i did the IVF, yeah. IVF cycle i would have a healthy body and healthy eggs and then we'd be able to get a lot of them and so i was going to acupuncture like twice mm -hmm. a week I would know once or twice a week I was going to acupuncture yeah with the intention of like treating fertility issues treating yeah ovaries, yep. right? and I was loving it I loved going to I, that was my intention every time <laughs> I went there I was intending my body is healing I am healing yeah my body is ready and I was here I was saying mm -hmm. all this stuff and then I was reading that book called uh it starts with the egg and there's all I all, love that book it's really good and there was all mm -hmm. this stuff in there. So I was like doing things like, you know. You're getting uh, rid of plastics, changing of, your, your cosmetics. Yeah. and mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like, you know, yeah. not touching receipts, for example, because they've got, is it phthalates mm -hmm. or whatever it is in them? I think it's, yeah, it, it's that and like BPA or something. Yeah, no, BP not BPA. I think it's phthalates. You're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, and, and I was like, I'm not, <laughs> every time I got a receipt, I'd be like, Johnny, you can take the receipt. I was literally protecting <laughs> my body so that I was yeah. like, my body was like preparing itself for healing and for like being in a good place for an IVF cycle within the next few months. You know what I love about what you were doing? And I want to take a second to point this out is all the stuff that you were doing, the acupuncture, I'm, I'm guessing you're probably taking some vitamins or supplements yeah. or whatever avoiding chemicals, all those things. Like, yes, you were doing it with an IVF cycle in mind, but you weren't doing it with pregnancy in mind necessarily. You weren't planning on getting pregnant. The IVF was, so you, you had like these eggs stored away for when you wanted to. And yeah. so all the stuff that you were doing was for your own health, yeah, right? Yeah. It goes back to like this, okay. all of this starting and ending with us, exactly self-care, self-concept of I'm doing all this. I'm healing my body. And it wasn't about I'm healing my body so I can get pregnant next month. It's I'm healing my body because this is what I need to do. This is what feels good to me. Yeah. And I'm like, sure, you had your end, you had your end state in mind as you're doing that. But in those moments, you were doing it for yourself. Right. Yeah. And that's where the shift really happens. Yeah. And it's so interesting. What's so interesting about it is that I was also doing things like going to sit by the water and being really regulated, mm -hmm. like focusing on like calming my nervous system I was sitting in the sun. And I was like yep. taking time for myself. A lot of time I was taking for myself. I was like going to the gym and I was doing these things that were basically making me feel better. And I was yeah. you know, as much as possible looking after myself. But the thing is, I, I think that, you know, where I was, I still was, wasn't where I like wanted to be like I still wasn't I was still feeling like I've got I've got um you know like I wanted to I wanted to feel generally calmer and and I don't know there was something I thought something was wrong and uh you know I wasn't really that regulated we were going through a bit of a stressful time but then mm -hmm. I got back I would had like the longest cycle ever so it was like 70 mm -hmm. days I'd had like a 70 day long cycle and oh yeah, the other thing that happened was um, we we kept going past this restaurant called Bella Cecilia, which is um, mm -hmm. I we'd always thought that if we have a girl, then we'd call it Bella. And so and we were going mm -hmm. to Sicily, and I'll, I I was say things for a joke like, oh imagine if uh, imagine if we um, conceive uh, Bella in Sicily. <laughs> <laughs> and things like that imagine if that, <laughs> imagine if that was that'd be weird wouldn't it and then I was joking I was like genuinely didn't think that it was gonna happen um, Wait, have you announced the gender have you announced the sex of your baby yet not yet but are you uh, waiting to do it or I feel like don't take anything from this conversation like I'm not I'm not saying that it is Bella and I'm not okay okay not Bella. <laughs> I got say, it maybe yeah. it's a Bella maybe it's not a Bella we'll find yeah. out we're gonna find out yeah. in time um 
Well, I I already know, but yeah, it's um, yeah, it's, it's it's so I was sort of thinking, saying these things as a joke, but really, honestly, not taking it seriously at all. I had absolutely let go of the idea of being pregnant now, and I literally thought it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't, it doesn't actually matter. I'm going to be okay, like either way. And Mm -hmm. I really did get to the point where I was like fed up of trying, honestly, like people get fed up with manifesting their specific person and get fed up of manifesting someone to love them and all that kind of stuff. You just think, oh my God, I can't do this anymore. It's exhausting. And I was tired Mm -hmm. of it. Everything I was doing, I was doing it for myself and for my own self-assurance, you know, with freezing my eggs and stuff. I was just doing it for me. I wasn't doing it for any other reason. And then I'm just looking after my body. I just felt like that was a good thing to do. So, um, yeah, I had the longest cycle ever. And I thought what my thought process was, was something, this is not right. I've got to sort out my cycle. Like, this is too long. Like, why is it 70 days? And I really had, basically, I'd thought that I hadn't had a period, like, uh, two or three weeks before because it was such a light period I'd had a really really light period and I thought it wasn't a period and it was all my cycle was sort of all messed up but it was a period and so I got my sort of period maths all wrong and actually had yeah. then ovulate two weeks later in Sicily <laughs> and uh that's where it happened and um then you know like I got back to England and I was thinking yeah, I remember speaking to my friend Tanya and I said to her, I haven't had a, I haven't had a period. For, and she's been on my channel before as well. I haven't had a period for so long. She went, you're pregnant. She was like, you, you've you got to do another test. Because I'd already done one when I got back and it was negative, right? So I'd done a test when I got yeah. back and it was negative. Yeah. And I looked at it and went, that is negative, bye. And I thought, right, I've just got to go to the doctors and sort mm-hmm. my cycle out. And then the next week I did another one after she'd said that and it was just so clearly positive. So like whenever I... yeah in the past I've been going is it positive I don't know if that's positive or there's a tiny line I can't really see it's really faint but this one was just like no that's definitely positive and so I was like yeah but honestly I mean the truth is that when I when I found out I was not like your stereotypical I'm over the moon I'm gonna ring Johnny and tell him amazing I was absolutely terrified absolutely yeah you know like what why why now and I was thinking mm-hmm. I know I said that you could come whenever you want <laughs> but actually but I wasn't expecting it to be right now okay <laughs> are you sure but the thing is I knew mm-hmm. with this one that it wanted to stay the weird thing was there wasn't any anxiety about it leaving me it was more like mm-hmm. it was more like I I really feel like this one wants to stay and I was sort of confused I was just confused I was really like huh yeah I've been so not in thinking this like this just seems all over the place why now and I I was questioning divine timing I was questioning everything I was questioning literally I was all of my sort of spirituality just went away for a minute and I was like no this doesn't make sense (laughs) this doesn't make Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah and I was actually we were both really shocked and we were both you know, it's take. It, I think the first, honest to God, the first twelve weeks of me knowing that I was pregnant. Um. Oh, you still there? You still sorry? You froze for a minute then. Um. Can you hear me? No. Sorry, we had an internet issue just then. Um. The first twelve weeks. What what I was saying. The first twelve weeks. I literally. I thought there was something not right about the way the way I'd responded. I wasn't over the moon about it. I wasn't like ringing everyone saying, guess what's happened? I'm over the moon. And there's no one on the internet to tell you that that's normal. There's no one on the, mm. it feels like I was the only one. You see on social media, everybody going, everybody sort of like, I'm so grateful and I'm so happy to announce and I can't wait to meet this baby. And I know that is how people genuinely feel. But I think there's a lot of people for me, like after four miscarriages, first of all, you are quite on the fence. uh, You're guarded a little bit, right? You're guarded with it. And also I was like, all of my shit came up, right? All of my trauma, like 
am I going to be a good mum? What if I am? What, mm-hmm. what, you know, like, who am I as a mum? Am I a mum? Like, all of these questions, like, freaked me out, like, so much. And I actually had a really quite intense reaction, which was then diagnosed as, like, uh, antenatal depression. Um, wow. Yeah, I, I literally was the most depressed I've ever been in my life. And, and it feels weird mm-hmm. saying that now because I've come such a long way. Um because I really did take it into my own hands. I've got to feel better and I'm going to do everything in my power to feel better. Um, but I, I had a lot of support and, and it was just like, it was just such a shock. It was just such a shock. I don't know how to explain it. I honestly don't really even know why it was so, my reaction was so severe, but it could also be hormones as well. You know, like it was really intense. Right. And uh, after I went to the um, 12 week scan, went to the 12 week scan and my dad was over from Australia and Johnny said you should go to the 12 week scan because you're never going to get to do this again like my dad was only over for a little while and so my dad came with me and honestly it was like the nicest thing like my dad was so supportive and so yeah. asking all these questions that I didn't think of and then we were both my dad was like looking at the baby like jumping up and down on the screen and it was like Wow. And all of my kind of like anxiety kind of just dissipated about the pregnancy yeah. itself at that point. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, this is happening. <laughs> it's really I, happening. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so that's when things turned a corner for me. And I started thinking, I can start to feel better about this and I can start to feel grateful for it. And I did now I I'm at the point where I'm like, I can't, I can't imagine it not happening. And I'm really grateful for it happening. And, you know, I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, my emotions have really turned in a positive way. And I look back at it and I think, of course I'm pregnant. Like, look at all those things that the, the visualizations that had been happening for years. And also the thing is I found what was so weird is in my kind of like despair and my my nights of waking up in the middle of the night and this terror honestly I cannot I can't explain it other way than like I was in a state of like complete shock and Mm -hmm. fear fear just fear complete fear of like how am I going to do this how are we going to do this you know and I don't know I don't know why it was so intense but it was and I woke up and I found an old diary that I'd written only a few months before. And it was me saying, I'm a mother, I'm a mother, I'm a mother. My body yeah. is healthy, my body is healed. Mm-hmm. And I love being a mum. I'd written that and I was like reading it going, huh? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you wrote that? I was like, this is so crazy. It was just... My emotions were really, really all over the place. Like I can't explain mm-hmm. to you like how all over the place they were and how emotionally up and down I was. So like I'm I i I'm saying this and thinking, I wonder if maybe someone was watching this and then maybe they experience something like this in the future and they remember this and they say, Oh, it's normal. It's okay. You know? Exactly. Because I really needed that and it was really hard to find. And um, yep. you know, like a lot of people don't say that about uh having a baby or, or being pregnant and stuff yeah. be like the happiest time in your life but actually it was it was really hard and it just it's like it wasn't that I didn't want it it's just I got such such a shock with yeah my, uh, I, with- I think like reverse engineering this like like listening to your story of how everything transpired for me sitting here reverse engineering it it seems like what you had been doing for years was planting seeds, right? Yeah. When you're walking through this field and picturing you and Johnny and the and, and you're pregnant and you're and you're writing about how you're a mother and you're picturing all these wonderful things. Um, you're planting these little seeds. And then at a certain point, you completely detached from it where you were like, I, I trust that it's gonna happen, or and even yeah. if it doesn't, I'm gonna be okay. And you just detach from it. So you plant all these seeds. You detach from the outcome and by detaching from the outcome, and, and we're going to talk more about detachment, like in part two on my channel, because I think detachment is such a powerful thing. But yeah. once you planted those seeds and detached, there was no more resistance, right. Yeah. For, for, for the universe to fight against. And so it was able to manifest, like manifest, like you said, like in this perfect divine timing. Oh my God. The, the time, like, cause now I see like the universe, like 
literally or God or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. knows what it's doing and I like trust yeah. that I really trust that and also like I'd been asking for like peace I'd been asking for stability I'd been asking mm -hmm. for like you know joy and more love and all of these things and I saw this like post on Instagram sometimes Instagram is a terrible place to go to for advice and yeah. sometimes that you get these quotes where you're like oh my god I need to see that and it was this quote that said you you will get the child or you'll get you won't get the baby that you want you'll get the one that you need or something like that it was like for all the things that you've asked for that's the child that you that you'll get and I was thinking this is so so interesting and now like you know we're all feeling better about it like Johnny's family's been really supportive my family's been like incredibly supportive and like there is so much support for like new mums and things I actually met um a nanny this morning I was like oh I love her she's gonna she's gonna be there for me and she's gonna help and yeah. you know like it's really nice to have that support and um yeah it's just like it definitely turned a corner especially like when we told certain members of the family and uh you know some really like beautiful reactions from especially the younger people in the family and stuff and um yeah, no, it's turned into like a, you know, it's gone from, it, and it was another example for me of resilience and persisting, yeah. persistence, because I couldn't have gone on the way that I felt. And I knew really as much as it felt like it was never going to end, that it would end and that, you know, mm -hmm. I would feel better again. But at the time I couldn't see how, I couldn't see how I was going to yeah. feel better. And like, I also feel like I was manifesting a happier healthier state within myself and a state where I can be a really emotionally available mum and I can be yeah. really present and I that I become like a lioness like now I'm like so protective of my energy I'm so protective of my mm -hmm. time I I literally went all out on like self-care like I was like so yeah in nature a lot love walking in nature and running even in nature and like being with friends having a more broad life than I had before when it was just me and Johnny traveling around the world like I've got people around me I've got friends around me I've got fr family around me I've like building you know my business more and like there's basically my life is bigger now than it than it was and I feel like the little things that I did like the 10 minute meditations to soothe my nervous system the breath work, the running, the, you know, seeing my friends, the creativity, all those things in little bursts, like added up and helped me so much to move from a place of like, you know, real darkness to bringing me back to a more positive state. Again, where I can feel so grateful for this journey. And I can look back at it and go bloody hell, that is amazing. Like, you know, yeah. I'm like thinking about me and Johnny 24 like sitting on the beach in Brighton like thinking how one day we're going to be together and one day we're going to have a family and one day one day one day you know and, and like you are yeah and like actually I think part of the manifestation as well was um you know talking about it and thinking about it with myself but then also like mm -hmm. the conversations that I had with him as well you know like mm -hmm. he would say he would say to me um your you know we would talk about oh one day when we have a baby when we have you know we would we would, we would, yeah. talk about, we would those conversations were like really important as well um but definitely like so much of it was like you know Johnny always says to me you did all this you you created all this <laughs> and I'm like yeah pretty much <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, what's funny is, is Derek, my husband, he does not believe in manifestation. He's like a diehard atheist believes in nothing really? like whatsoever. We're so like, cause I'm this like spiritual hippie, California girl. And he's this like very, he's an atheist. Um, but whether or not he believes in manifestation, he's still manifesting. And I don't think he realizes that he is like co-creating our own child yeah. with me. Because yeah. he's, he's constantly saying like, you're going to be such a good mom. Oh my God. Like, and always hyping me up. I can't wait for us to have our baby, even though the 3d has contradicted that over and over and over again, yeah. he still keeps speaking That's it so into existence. Yeah. And every mother's day, he gets me gifts. 
every mother's day, he gets me flowers. He takes me out to eat. He does all these wonderful things. Kind of like we were talking about earlier in the conversation about, you know, you and I both, even, um, even after the miscarriages, we're still mothers. We still carry yeah. this life. And so he still honors me every single mother day, mother's day for having carried his children. Mm -hmm. Um, so even though I love that you have Johnny's support in like manifesting this, Derek doesn't believe in manifestation, but he's still supporting me manifesting it. He just doesn't yeah. necessarily. It's, really funny. It. it's actually really comforting, isn't it? Like I found that like when I was thinking, will it happen? Like what's wrong mm -hmm. with me? Johnny never went there. He never yep. went, he never went Same. there. He was, he was always very much like, yeah, well, it, it's going to happen when it happens. Is it, yep. you know like he was always very level headed about it which is not really what I'm like. like Same. I'm, I'm 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 a very controlling person so I'm like no I'm ready for it to happen now and I did the things I'm supposed to so it needs to happen now like that's yeah. how my brain works and it's really hard for me at times to let go of control. Yeah that it, that's the thing and that's what the the letting go process is so powerful yeah. for you know like when you when you realize ah oh, I'm doing that thing again where I'm like yeah. trying to control this outcome that's where you see it and you make a different choice and I think but sometimes I think life lets that happen for you naturally you know like yeah. quite often it's it can be it can be a really painful journey to get to that place it can it? humble you it yeah, can humble yeah. you yeah mm -hmm. and I think I I just definitely think I just got to the point where I was like this is this is just hard like thinking about it like this and I just I just you know I'm fine I'm f I'm I like I would wake up in the night and I think I'm grateful for all this space I'm grateful yeah. for not having to wake up actually in three in the morning I'm grateful for like you know all these things that you know in the moment I was I'm grateful mm -hmm. for and there's benefits like I was talking to you earlier there's no right or wrong with having a baby there's pros and cons to it there's there's like amazing things that can happen if you don't have a baby and there are amazing things that happen if you do you know like there's um literally no right or wrong to it there's also grief in both things there is grief yes. in having a baby there is grief in not having a baby there's there's grief in having a baby because you give up a lot of stuff you you have to sacrifice a lot your old self dies you um, can't have the same freedom that you had. You can't be as independent. You can't be as selfish. All of those things um, change and relationships yep. change and everything. There's there's grief in it that some people find really hard, but there's there's also grief in not having a child as well. You know, it's, it's the same. It's like, no matter what happens, if you can get to the place where you, I definitely feel like I got to the place where I was like, no matter what happens, it's going to be okay. Like I will find joy yeah. and pain in both. And like that yeah. gave me like so much peace and also literally handing over, like going, I trust the spirit babies. I trust them mm -hmm. more than I trust me. They know when it, like this baby knows when it wants to come. And so like when it happened, I was like, I don't know you or anything, but like what and I was like really confused but I was also like you know what you're doing because I know yeah. the state it felt different like I don't know how to explain yeah. it it felt like the anxiety of like <gasps> will it stay am I gonna have a miscarriage mm -hmm. for some reason wasn't there with that because yeah. I was so detached because I was so mm -hmm. not sure happening now but um, the other thing I was going to say to you that was really crazy um, was that I, I, when I found out I was pregnant and I was, uh, you know, very low and I was, you know, going through that really difficult time, I went to see a shamanic healer and Ooh, uh, I love that. And I'm actually going to Sedona, Arizona later this year so yeah. I can see a shaman and yeah, like I have this whole trip plan. So I'm really excited for that. Oh my God. So good. Cause I mean, long story short, like I had this, he said to me, you know, it was an amazing two hour, two and a half hour thing. He came to my house and uh, it was just me and this guy and he did all sorts of healing, cleansing things. Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, cured my family of old curses that were on my family mm -hmm. and all sorts of things and like showed me what my, my spirit, sp sorry, my spirit animals were, my guidance animals were and that my, it was a mother deer, interestingly. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, but basically, one thing that happened that was so crazy, the most spiritual experience I think I've ever had, 
um, was I, he said to me, I've been given a message to tell you that you need to go and sit by the river and think about the life that you want to create. And I was thinking, well, that's fine. I do that all the time. You know, I, I yeah. always <laughs> check. <laughs> that's fine. I'll do that. So the next day I went there and the weirdest sensation, like I suddenly felt like all of those children that I had miscarried was sat there with me. So there was this mm. daughter who was sat here and she was sat there with me and she was like holding my, she was putting a hand on my, uh, my knee and there were three boys. There were three mm. boys playing. They were all very, very little because they were later miscarriages. And I was like, I know who these people are. I know who I know who yeah. they are. That's my that's my daughter. And it was so visceral, like actually, like they were actually there. But they were all going, yeah. "We love you. We are here for you." Oh my god, it makes me emotional talking about it. Like, we love you. We're here for you. You're gonna be okay. And then there was like mm. all of my ancestors, all these people. I actually didn't know who they were behind me putting them surrounded by love surrounded by this support energetic support like mm -hmm. all of this all of this support my auntie who had died was there like literally it was like this energetic support of like you are not on your own and you will get through this and we are giving you the strength all of a sudden I felt this like push I have chills you're gonna make me cry like as you're describing this I'm picturing this and it's like such an emotional yeah experience it's, it's crazy I felt this pain on my back and I was like mm -hmm. what I was having such a nice time with all this love <laughs> and then I felt like this pain like this not this pain but this shadow this darkness behind me and I and I was like huh this is scary what does this want what does this want and I said go away and I turned around and I was like please mm -hmm. go away and then it wouldn't go away and so I, mm. I turned around and I faced it. So I basically turned around. It wasn't, I couldn't see it, but I energetically knew that it was there. I turned around and I said, what have you come to teach me? I'm, I mm. want to know. And it said strength. And the first thing that came to my head was strength. And I, it pushed me up and I stood up and I felt this presence pushing me forward as if to say, go, go and do this. And it mm. suddenly, it changed from being a dark energy to a, I'm supporting you. This is your strength. I'm with you. So even the darkness turned into light and yeah. all of these like children just walking along with, it was so crazy. Honestly, it was like, it was like, honestly, the most spiritual kind of uh, thing that I'd ever experienced. And it really was like a, a, a whole message. Like you're not alone. We are with you you're going to be a good mum and and yeah. you can do this yeah so I just I just sort of think like even when we can't see it and uh, interestingly like I mean I'd, I'd been told to go there obviously for that specific reason like spiritually yeah. whatever that message was given to me but I think that energy is with us all the time you know personally yeah. I, I believe that you know that energy is with you your your mm -hmm. um you know babies that you 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 have experienced and had and are a mother to are still with you and and they love you you know and they're mm -hmm. never going to leave you and I think like it's the same with that energy we don't know where you know we sometimes don't know it because we're so in our human minds <laughs> yep yeah yeah I just I just feel like it was a the whole thing has been and I mean obviously I'm I'm like nearly 18 weeks now and there's still more than half of this pregnancy to go and then a whole lifetime after that yeah. journey. But like, yeah, getting here to where I am has been a very, very up and down, not linear, certainly not um, ever certain, you know, in my mind, it was never like, I'm, this is definitely going to happen. There were times where I thought maybe this won't, but that never stopped it from yeah. happening you know and um exactly and yeah yeah I think um that's what that's what I've said to a lot of people like who are manifesting a specific person or who are manifesting a job or a move or you know whatever it is and they think that their thoughts have to be perfect 24 yeah. 7 right and they and they don't 
not a single person walking this planet is perfect. And if they say they are, they're a liar, right? We're all learning and growing and we're on a journey. That's why we're here. We're here on this planet to learn and grow. And, um, so you don't have to think perfect thoughts 24 seven to still be able to manifest the life that you deserve, the life that you want. Um, and we, and I've had so many people come to me like worried of, oh my God, I spiraled. And I know I just ruined my manifestation. No, you didn't. No, No, you didn't. No, don't plant that limiting belief in your head. Right. Yeah. Like that negative thoughts are part of the process. Like if Mm -hmm. you can be less afraid of them by knowing that, yeah, I'm supposed to have this, I need to have this. It's like, it's, uh, yeah. Like you don't learn without that. You know, you don't, you exactly. know, you don't know the contrast. You don't know the difference. We need to know the difference. We need to know what, what, you know, when we are, you know, maybe out of alignment when we're not, but even when you're out of alignment and you're thinking, Oh no, I'm out of alignment. So let yourself be so out what? of alignment. You know, that's where exactly. you are at the moment. Let that be the process where you are. And that's okay. You know, definitely does not mean, and trust me from, you know, like, having so many negative thoughts and like really, really having a lot of negative thoughts about manifesting my specific person. Will it ever happen? I don't know if it's going to happen. Maybe we're not supposed to be together. All these things. Um, But also having a feeling of trust, like a trusting knowing and most of all, like building on my own sense of self-worth and self-confidence and like trust in myself that I'll be okay no matter what. Like that's been the most stabilizing thing and let's go, it helps me to let go of the attachment to anything. And it's not always easy. I mean, seriously, it's not easy because we're human and we, we want these things and we want to, we have a normal human desire, especially to basically keep the planet alive. It's part of being (laughs) a, a human. It's like what we're, you know, what we're, a lot of people feel like that's what their purpose is. That's what they want to do. And like, fair Mm. enough like you you human yeah. so like having those desires is is a good thing it's just like being able to like trust your life's journey and trust like your guidance and trust your life's timing you know and i know what you mean about because i also had the same thing i know i'm a few years younger than you but age was on my mind so i was thinking yep but i also did get to the point where i was like you know what if I'm 44, 45, and I still don't know, and I want to have a baby, I will fucking have a baby. I, yep, I will yep exactly. You know? I have I have clients in their 50s who are manifesting pregnancy. You yeah. know, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. No. And I think people do put that age as a limitation on them. And yeah, I which becomes that- a limiting belief, which can become a self-fulfilling prophecy if we allow that to take root. Yeah. Like, and I think, um, you know, I've got a friend who's 43, 44, and she, Mm -hmm. she had a baby and then she had another one, you know? Yep. One of, one of my friends, um, she and I are, our stories, it's like our, um, we're like two trees that are next to each other that look like we're totally separate, but our roots are intertwined. Yeah. And, um, my first pregnancy, she was pregnant. We both lost our babies. Mm -hmm. My second pregnancy, she became pregnant. We both lost our babies. She's older than me. So I'm 37. She's 43 now, but she was 42 and found out she was pregnant a third time. She had done nothing medically after the first two pregnancies. She didn't change anything. She really just started working on like LOA concepts, concepts foundationally. Mm -hmm. Um, She got pregnant a third time, went full term, has a beautiful son, no issues whatsoever. Yeah. Right. And she's 40 three now that's so interesting because as well like the amount of like hundreds of dollars of pounds and whatever that like, I spent on specialist appointments going to yep. see specialists yep. um you know fertility doctors when I was like what's wrong yeah. with me? why can't I like keep a baby what's wrong and I went to all these specialists and they said look here take progesterone for example why yeah. don't you take, next time yeah. you're pregnant why don't you take this progesterone or maybe you need, um, you know, to take a certain um, medication to sort of regulate your cycle or all these things. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I had the medication there. It was there. And like with this, I wasn't thinking I'm not going to take progesterone because I'm not trying to, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, like it's not, it's not on my mind. It's not like I, I need yeah. to do that right now. 
And like the weirdest thing was, like I made a few sort of shifts, right? A shoot, a few shifts in terms of like maybe I was eating a little bit less sugar, and I was doing those, mm-hmm. things, like I said, like going to acupuncture and blah blah blah, yeah, whatever. Like n- nothing major, but certainly wasn't taking any medication or anything. And obviously, I'm not a medical practitioner; I can't speak to, for everybody. Yeah, yeah, my case in my in my particular case, you know, these things that I was doing and the mindset that I think I had about me have being able to have a baby you know mm-hmm. i was um uh i was literally i think what i was doing was i was um you know <laughs> healing my body without realizing that I was healing it and i know that it worked because when i went to my scan they said to me you've got the most perfect ovaries i've ever seen <laughs> wow wow what? my mom has gone my mum was with me and we, we looked at each other and we went, huh? What? Yeah. What, 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 what do you mean? And she said, seriously, if this was a medical exam where I had to like find the ovaries and everything, I'd be like, yes, I'm glad I got this scan. Yeah. Because those are the most perfect ovaries I've ever seen. And That's I was so thinking, funny. That's really weird. And I was thinking about all the things that I'd done and like, you know, the action that I had taken, you know, like I'd, I'd made in intentional, like taken intentional action towards the thing that I wanted, lived by, embodied it, basically. In other words, like I had embodied someone who believed that this was possible for me, you know, and that's that's the whole thing of embodiment. And like when I look back at my diaries and I'm writing, I'm a mother, I'm a mum, yeah. I'm a mum. I'm like, oh my God, I literally, why am I surprised? Why was I surprised that this- I'm pregnant? What? Like, what were you expecting, Corey? I know, yeah. like everyone was, and you know, obviously, like I had a few people say, "You know how you get pregnant, right?" Like, yes, I know, but you yeah. know how confusing my cycle was. You know, you don't yeah. know. Like, it was just, it was so confusing. I was absolutely convinced that I wasn't going to ovulate because these are two things that I learned as well. Like for anyone with polycystic ovaries, my specialist told me that one of the things that makes it harder younger is that you have so many eggs when you have polycystic ovaries, because my egg count was really, really, really high. And that actually can make it apparently can make it more difficult for um, IVF cycles because you can overstimulate Mm. the ovaries or whatever. But like I, uh, because uh, I have, you have more eggs They fight to ovulate. So they go, I'm going to ovulate. No, I'm going to ovulate. I'm going to ovulate. And then they can't decide. So they just go. So no ovulation happens. And by the time one does, they're really tired. So basically, you know, that's why the cycles take longer. And then sometimes you will have a pregnancy and the egg will will be too, will have been too tired to to sort of um, carry on. So she said to me, like, as you release more eggs and you get less eggs, you're actually more likely to you know in your older age to be able to like have a baby or to for it to happen naturally or something she said that because you know, they're not going to be so many of them fighting to ovulate and I was like oh that's really yeah. interesting so that also was a shift that I didn't know that maybe would never have been told where oh this isn't a limitation age is not a limitation yeah. you know we don't know everything medically do we so like we exactly so we we just told the things we told. Oh, when you hit thirty five, you're going to see a decline. And it's like, why does that have to be true? No. Like, why do you have it's to? It's not. It? It's not. Yeah. So it's kind of like you don't believe everything that you're told, especially with mm-hmm. someone who you know, you, like literally, no one knows. No one knows. And right. I think there's so many miracle stories as well. I think that's the other thing that helps me is that. I did watch a lot of, at some points in my journey, I watched a lot of videos of people who had struggled and then had a baby. And like that made yeah. me feel like, yeah, well, it's possible for them. So it's possible for me. And I think like, exactly, that, that's like what gave me a lot of hope. And I remember thinking, do people usually have like four miscarriages? And then someone told me, oh, I've seen people who've had 12 and then had a perfectly mm-hmm. like, pregnancy. So like, it's literally it's it's nothing to do with your ability to carry a baby it's and exactly. then you think there's something wrong with me but there isn't you no. know it's just like yeah. trusting the process so yeah yes. <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. Well, this was, this was such a good conversation and I'm so happy for you and for Johnny. Um, do you want to hop over to my channel and we'll do part two where we are going to dig into, I know we touched briefly on like detachment and, you know, releasing yourself from the expectations of your yeah. life and, and being present and being mindful, practicing self-care as you're going through this kind of journey or similar journeys. And so I, I think for part two, we're going to be diving more deeply into those parts and then talking a little bit about my journey as well. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, well, I hope um, you guys have enjoyed watching this um, video. It's been like such a fun conversation to have. And um, yeah. Yeah. Um, if anybody's got any questions, you can ask them in the comments. Um, and if anyone wants to share anything about your journey, I'd love to hear it, love to see it. And um, yeah, I hope that you've got something out of this video that you can relate to yourself, something that you can take away. And if you do, let me know what it is. Because I always like to know which bits, which bits got to people, which bits like resonated. It's really interesting for me to know. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for coming on to my channel and we'll go over to yours now and uh, talk about the next the next bit. So guys, if you watch this video, jump over to Mary's channel and you'll see another video. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Bye everyone.